Oxygen Blast Technical Seminars are an Intertech production. For instructor-led.net, Java, and XML courses, visit us at www.intertech.com. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Andrew Trollson, and I'm going to be giving a little uh, recording this afternoon on a talk that I actually did back in June 2010. It's a re-recording of a talk that I gave at Microsoft. Basically, what we're going to do here is we're going to look at um, some of the changes that took place with .NET 4.0. And if you have already been playing with 4.0, you're probably aware that it is a pretty large set of changes that uh, took place. I'm not going to be talking about everything here. I wanted to focus more on the core language changes because both uh, C Sharp and VB did get some pretty nice updates. But then I also want to talk about a couple of brand new APIs. And I actually picked out a few of my favorites. The Task Parallel Library and something called PLink, which you might know stands for Parallel Link. And then we'll wrap up here by just talking a little bit about something that was introduced for WPF called the Visual State Manager. Now, if you have not played around with the new version of uh, the framework, one thing which is a pretty big change is that the help system is now hosted through a web browser. And I just want to pull this up real quick so you can see it. Now that doesn't mean that you have to have an internet connection. You can actually install the framework documentation right on your desktop. Let me just show you how to do that. So we can go to the start button, go under all programs, and then you're going to see the very familiar little blue question mark for the documentation. But as soon as we open this up, it's going to go ahead and launch a local help system. So you'll see this coming right here to your, your machine. Notice the IP address. And uh, basically right here, .NET Framework 4. This is where you could get to if you want to start to drill into all the different changes throughout the framework. Now as far as getting this thing installed on your machine, all we have to do is go back to the same Visual Studio area. And then under Tools, you're going to find this guy, Manage Help Settings. Now I already have mine installed, but what you can basically do here, if you click Install Content from Online, it's going to go ahead and show you all the different packages that you could install locally. And I, I would recommend if you have the hard drive space, just grab it all, because there's plenty of good stuff on here. So you can just kind of selectively go through add whatever pieces you want and then you'll be all good to go. Now back to our slide deck. So why don't we go ahead and begin by talking about some changes that took place to VB and C Sharp. You know these days it really is very very true that these two languages are extremely similar when it comes to their functionality. There are only a, a very few number of differences these days. Uh, in C-sharp land, we have pointers. Now, I don't know about you, but I, I don't use them hardly at all. The only time I've ever dabbled with them a little bit was for some complicated interop. But beyond that, they're just not a very useful feature for most C-sharp programs. VB, on the other hand, has something that I really wish C Sharp did have, and that's that nice VB literal syntax. So beyond these two pieces, the languages are really in sync now with the release of .NET 4.0. And here's one example, okay? C Sharp now supports a feature that VB has had for a long, long time, and that's optional parameters. Now, at first glance, it might not appear to be wickedly useful. I mean, it's kind of a neat feature, but I'll show you where it can be really helpful in just a couple of seconds. But here's a simple example of how you could use this. When you define a parameter now, you can actually assign it a default value. And then if that method is called, as we see down here, where you don't specify a supplied argument, that will be used automatically. 
So basically, we got it set up here so that the uh, programmer cannot find the data, but the CFO cannot find the payroll. So we're just going to be leveraging that optional value. Now one thing which is maybe not obvious, at least it wasn't for me, but the value that you supply to a default parameter, it must be understood at compile time. So the part down here in red, you know, when I was first kind of playing around with this, I thought, hey, it'd be nice to have a, maybe a timestamp that would say when the error occurred for the error log. And uh, we can't do that because the now property is not known until runtime. So if you attempted to type this in, you would actually get a compile time error. So that's one restriction. If I can just go back a slide, here's another little restriction here too. All of the uh, optional parameters have to come at the end of a signature. So you can't put them prior to unoptional parameters, which makes sense, right? Because then uh, how, would we able, how would we be able to figure out what was optional or if we were actually just skipping over it? Now here's an example of where this could really be useful. You know, when you're designing any kind of a class, it's certainly not going to be uncommon to have many constructors. So we might do something like this, right? We'd have multiple constructors, and then we can chain them all together, and this kind of delegate all the workload here to the master. So here we'll just use our constructor chaining syntax. Now that's not too bad, but notice how these two constructors right here, they don't really do anything. Right? They're just kind of feeding the data back to the master. So nowadays, with optional parameters, I could go ahead and just have this one constructor that would be functionally the same as what we see over here. Right? Because now what I've basically done is I've just supplied defaults for everything. So if I don't pass in any arguments, I've effectively created it with the default constructor. And then I can specify one, two, or three named arguments as well. So anytime you're doing some sort of a method overload, this is not limited only to um, constructors, obviously, but whenever you're doing any kind of a method overload, now with optional parameters, we can really simplify how we set things up. Now on a related note, C Sharp supports another feature which VB has had for a long, long time called named arguments or named parameters. The idea here is that it makes it possible to invoke a method and specify the arguments you pass into that method in any order you choose. Now, just to do this for the heck of it is not useful at all. Right? If you know that you are trying to call a method that requires a string, a string, and an int, I'll just pass it a string and a string and an int. But I'll show you where this feature can actually be pretty nifty. Really what it boils down to is you can really simplify interop with com. And we'll see how in just a couple of seconds. So let's go ahead and examine how we can do this here. So here's a method. Now notice the parameters that it is expecting, right? First two parameters are of type console color. And then we have a string as the third parameter. Now over here, notice how I'm going to be calling it in a different calling pattern, right? I'll give it the first console color, but then I'm going to give it a string followed by the second console color. And the reason that this is okay is because I've actually named the argument, which we can see right over here. Oop, a little too dark there. <laughs> but you can see what I've done, right? It's just basically the actual name of the parameter with a colon operator. Now, kind of similar to what we saw there with optional parameters, there are a couple of little restrictions. Like down here, if I attempt to specify positional arguments before, then we're going to get into a bit of a problem. 
So we need to go ahead and make sure that any kind of optional arguments are always listed at the end. For more free learning resources and to see the latest lineup of our instructor-led.net, Java, and XML courses, visit us at www.intertech.com. Thank you.